This video and ones like it are made possible by my supporters on Patreon. If you want to have a say in what games and topics are covered on this channel, head over to patreon.com forward slash toogie24 and get involved. You can also head over to my Teespring store to buy shirts that you'll never wear in public. Link in the description. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to our eight team tournament. If you missed day one yesterday, make sure to go check out that video now. We're going to have spoilers coming up here in a few moments. But yesterday, we started it off a tournament involving players being placed onto teams, which is dictated off of the round they were drafted in. So we have the first rounders on one team, the seventh rounders on another, and of course, that mystery eight eighth team easy for me to say the udfa is a lot of u's in that sentence and the results of day number one it looked like this where shockingly we had a couple of upsets now the first rounders lost game one to utica went on to win the series in five but look at that they'll be taking on the fifths who upset the fourths in round number one in seven games on the other side the only sweep as the seconds beat the sevenths and of course, the biggest upset, the sixth, knocking off the seconds in six games. So this is round number two, and we are gonna get right down to business as the firsts take on the fifths. The fifths and the first, and this is so many S's and TH's, it's unbelievable. One versus five, game one. Let's do this, of course, again. That first episode had all the lines and what everything looks like, so make sure to check that out. A big thank you to those of you that did. But let's do this. First period here in this first game, and the fives have a lead. Zach Hyman continuing that Oilers playoff push performance. Unbelievable. Second period, still 1-0, being outshot 35-14. to What is with the first rounders? Getting off to horrible starts in the series. Second period underway, third period done. And Kirill Kaprizov scores two power play goals. And despite 45 shots, the first rounders lose game one. Connor Hellebach, who if I'm not mistaken, had the lowest save percentage of any goalie in round one, yet they won the series, rises to the occasion here in game one. And again, the former first rounders behind the eight ball in a series. Absolutely ridiculous. We go to game one of the two versus six. Can the sixes hand the second rounders their first loss of this tournament? First period, and I think we have our answer. Good Lord. That's a rough day at the office. Stepan, Robertson, and Kucherov. Two of those goals, 39 seconds apart. Second period, okay, okay. Yossi made it four nothing, but Lee and Manjapani get the sixes back into it. Third period and the score holds. Well, the seconds move to five and zero oh in this tournament. Good performance from Linus Allmark to keep his team in it, but ultimately it was not enough. So the seconds getting the job done, but the firsts again, down one to nothing. Let's see what they can do here in game number two. First period, 1-0. Brent Burns with a shorthanded goal. Second period, now 2-0. Steven Stamkos on the power play. Get that even strength and penalty shot goal, please. Third period, and well, there's two more goals. John Carlson, an empty netter from Kale McCarr. They, they were only missing a penalty shot goal to complete the Mario. Um, as Kirill Kaprizov got the lone goal for the fives, or the Mario, depending on where you want to be from. 4-1 to one, the final score, and the ones again bounce back from a game one defeat. As the seconds would take a 2 to nothing lead. Let's see if they can do it. First period, goalless. 17 shots to 6. Second period, still goalless, and the shot's much closer. Third period, and the seconds win it. Rupe hints on the power play. The lone goal of the game. The second rounders are 2 are just, I mean, they're up two to nothing. I was gonna say they're six and zero oh in this tournament. What is going on? How are they the ones looking like a dynamo here when they technically have the more difficult side of the bracket? Because Roman Yossi is amazing and handsome. We go to game three, one one series between one and five, first period, and the first rounders take the lead with Steven Stamkos. 
second period. Still a one to nothing lead. 35 shots to 13. Third period. Oh my goodness. I think they got tired of messing around. Matthews bookends. Goals from Dreisaitl and Ranton in five to nothing. 50 shots to 19. What more can be said about that? Same thing as the last round. The ones start off slow and then they take over. Game three. This might be a set of short series here. Let's see if the sixes can show up. They do take a one to nothing lead off of a power play goal from Cam Atkinson. Second period, now 2-2 though. Aho and Hints brat the goal for the six. And here we go. Let's see what happens. Third period, and we're going to overtime. Alex Dabrinkit ties the game with 41 seconds to go. After the seconds had the lead and blew it, he scored from center ice as well. Again, I hate that whole randomized thing because it does that. We're going to overtime. Let's see who wins this. We'll stick with it. Great chance for the sixes, and they get the win. Jesper Bratt is the hero, his second of the game. And don't look now, both series, a 2-1 split through the first three games. We might not just be out of here in quick order. So we go to game four, the battle of one versus five. First period and a two to nothing lead for the ones. Patrick Kane and Victor Hedman. Second period, ooh, now three to two. Kaprizov and Sharon Govich, they tied it. McDavid restores the lead. I think we slow sim this third period. Maybe not that slow. And see how this plays out. Three to two. In favor of the former first rounders, now four to two as Connor McDavid scores again. Mm, don't look now though, Connor Garland and Mike Hoffman. Wow, two goals a minute apart. We're tied at four apiece. The fives are showing a good amount of heart here. Are we going to overtime? Yes, we are. Good for the fives, man. They're putting up a hell of a fight. We go to this overtime here in game four. Can they tie the series? Or will the firsts have a chance to end this in five? And indeed they will. Patrick Kane, the winner. 48 shots to 33. And the fives have put up a really good fight, but unfortunately it's not looking too good. Let's see if the sixes, after handing the seconds their first loss of this tournament, can they tie this series up at two apiece? First period is goalless. Shots were close. Second period is not goalless. Ryan O'Reilly as the seconds really pulled away in terms of pressure. The Blues captain gets the goal as we go to the third period here. In a similar situation, both teams trading power plays. The Sixes really need a win here or they will as well have a three to one deficit to try to overcome. I don't really like their chances in that instance. Again, one versus two seemed likely and it might just be about to happen. Roman Yossi makes it two to nothing. Power play goes to waste, but they don't need it. A 28 save shutout for Robin Leonard. Great performance from Darcy Kemper, but it did not matter. Both series at three to one. Will the ones punch their ticket? to the championship round. Let's find out. First period, three to nothing. Matthews, Malkin, and Kane. It's not looking too good for the former fifth rounders. Second period, it's now seven to two. Terry and Gallagher for the fives, but then Kane, Stamkos, McKinnon, and Makar. 29 shots to 12, and it ends up being an 8-3 final. Dreisaitl and Gallagher in the third. This, the same exact thing happened for the ones. A really rough start to the series, and then they steamroll their opponents over the next four games. 4-1 four final, and they are going to the championship round. But who will they be playing? That is the question. Well, let's find out. It is two versus six, perhaps for the last time. First period is goalless, 12 shots to seven. Second period is not, goal apiece, Benino and Roman Yossi. Good for Nick Benino getting involved. As we go to the third period, can the sixes pull this off? Kucherov makes it two to one. 
power play there. Five on three, and they get another one with Sebastian Ajo. It was the presumed final. There were upsets along the way, but indeed, it's going to happen. Bergeron seals the deal. 4-1, your final score. Tomorrow, in the final, it will be a battle of one versus two to crown a tournament champion. Just three losses between the two teams at this stage as we will take a look here. You get a look at the top point getters for the Florida Firsts. It's Kale McCarr leading the way. Top goal scorer, of course, is Connor McDavid. You had the fifths. They put up a valiant effort. Kirill Kaprizov, Connor Garland, Troy Terry were all fantastic. Garland with the eight goals. Fortunately, it was not enough. In the first round, of course, you had the fourths fall. We knew Batherson did very well. The sixths, Anders Lee, he was pretty quiet in round two. Uh, a lot of players for the sixth were. I mean, that's really the only way to put it. It was a bit of a rough matchup for them. Of course, the sevenths were bounced in round one. And then the seconds, of course, now going to the final. Roman Yossi leading the way. Top goal scorer, Nikita Kucherov. Two unbelievable juggernauts. I still can't believe the thirds lost like they did. And of course, the UDFA is lost as well. In terms of total goaltending, I mean, look at this. For the two goalies moving on to the final. Uh, I mean, Vasilevsky has not been very strong, but the offense in front of him has been. Whereas Robin Leonard uh, has simply been fantastic. Not even worth really you know, sorting by outright save percentage anymore. It is pretty much worth sorting by the wins. So... It is Leonard versus Vasilevsky in the final. We'll see if Vasi can actually sim somewhat well. We will see you guys tomorrow. One versus two. Who's going to win this showdown?